What is going on guys, Bisectatron here. Welcome back to today's video. This is base identification. So if you guys don't know how this series works, it may have been a little while since I've uh, last done this, uh, this type of video. Look at a base, talk about the base, and then look at the attack. So it's not just showing you guys attacks, but it's showing you guys why these attacks work for these specific types of bases. And we have Town Hall 12s, Town Hall 11s, Town Hall 10s, actually just one Town Hall 12 today. Um, and basically, it's just talking through the bases, giving you guys an idea. So then when you start to scout bases for your own wars, you can think, you know, I think I've seen this type of uh, setup before in terms of these key things within this base. That means I should use this army composition. Um, so that's kind of the goal of the series is to, is to give you guys an idea of what works and why it works on certain bases. So this is a Town Hall 12. Um, this was not a three star on it. It was a good plan. Should have three star, just unlucky in a certain way, and we'll talk about why. But um, first thing you want to look for at Town Hall 12, not to get too general on you guys, but the Town Hall typically has to go down to the kill squad. Um, there are other types of attacks where you can use the Warden's ability over it if you're using loons, or um, if it's an electron attack. There's, there's various exceptions, but um, that's something you typically want to do is get that Town Hall taken down. And you can see here the town hall is purposely, you know, this is a pretty good base, has the dead space separating the town hall from the, everything else. Um, but what the attacker realizes here is, hey, if I funnel on either side, get a kill squad in here, you know, warden over the town hall for when it explodes, and then jump here, this is where all the value is. I mean, look at this. You have the eagle, queen, plus an inferno. That you, Really, that inferno should be over farther, but it is reachable from this compartment here by a bowler which is something I talk about in base building. Um, and what this is doing by being able to get in and take out that core, you're clearing out this nice little runway for hogs. And it's, it's relatively narrow, which is what you want to see, no wider than the width of a heal spell. So all the hogs are contained within that heal spell as they move through. A nice little um, ring for the hogs to go around. And we don't see, um, sorry about that, we don't see uh, hogs at Town Hall 12 that much, but this is a good example of them. So we're going to go ahead and just play the replay and talk through it more. But yeah, Town Hall 12, look at the Town Hall. What can you get with a kill squad going at the Town Hall? Sometimes you're going to want to queen charge it. Sometimes you're just going to want to hit it with a kill squad like here. And then based off what you can get, how much do you want to invest? How deep do you want to go into the base? Can you then use miners? Or miners are very popular for Town Hall 12 three stars, by the way. Or can you use, you know, Laloon or even Hogs on the rest of the base based on what's left up after you make that initial push, whether it be a Queen Charge, a Kill Squad, whatever. Generally speaking, there are exceptions. We have Electron, Sui Battle Blimps, uh, um, stuff like that that complicates things, the Bat Spell. But that's a very general way to think about it. So right here, um, Tornado Trap makes things a little tricky. That's probably a good placement of the Tornado Trap. But Warden Ability over the, uh, the Town Hall... Right here, the Lava Hound is what really screwed things up because it keeps the king and, or sorry, keeps the queen and the warden back. And without them, this kill squad push doesn't get what it needs to get. It gets the eagle, and I don't think it gets the queen actually even. Or maybe, it, yeah, I don't think it gets the queen, which is obviously very important for this type of attack. Um, oh no, he did have the king's ability, so he does get the queen. I think there's the freeze. I think the queen's gonna go down. Yeah. Um, but doesn't get like that next Inferno, the Expo, Bomb Tower. Really, if the Queen had gone in, she could have gotten pretty much all of this. Not a whole lot of damage is going to be on her. Um, plus, you know, pair her with everything while it was still alive. That's a lot more value, especially with the Warden there also, instead of her going around the outside like she does. So, Hogs move through, and like I said, it's a decent ring for these Hogs. Having like this Bomb Tower up, and like this expo, which may have even gone down arguably if everything was a little bit easier without that Lava Hound CC. Um, the Hogs had an easier time. The pathing's a little more, a little uh, more difficult now because it's a little bit thicker. The core was only partially taken out. So we're gonna peter out right here. The Hogs, uh, no heal spells left. But it was a very good idea, good plan. And that's what you want to look to do at Town Hall 12 in your planning is to have that kind of. Uh, synergy, if I can use that word, uh, between your kill squad. Okay, I'm really getting hit by these text messages. I forgot to put on, let me just do it now. Um, oh, that's orientation lock. There we go. 
Um, that's what was I saying? The synergy between the kill squad and um, the whatever's on the back end, be it hogs, be it miners, um, laloon, anything like that. So good try there. This is the only one we're going to look at that's not actually a three star, just because I didn't have any 12v12 three stars sitting around for this video, unfortunately. And I had a lot of other good attacks I wanted to get out there. So we're going to look at two town hall. Oh, already. Uh, gotta pause that. Two Town Hall 11s, two Town Hall 10s. Looking at this next Town Hall 11 base, um, one thing I really like about it is this has very good characteristics for a queen charge. That's something that should be noticed right away. And why is that? Well, you have both Infernos, which are multi or single. Infernos are pretty anti-queen charge. The multis can lock onto the healers pretty easily. Um, and the singles obviously can lock onto your queen and take her out very quickly on a queen charge. So those are on the other side of the base, plus the air defenses are not like kind of nested inside the base, making it difficult and unpredictable in terms of them taking out healers. Uh, they're, they're very predictable on the outside, so the queen can get them as she moves in, and it's natural funneling. If she goes in this little moat right here, which she will, um, the walls are kind of keeping her in the base. She can't go anywhere, and then wall breakers, jump spell will let her into the core, and look at that value in the core. We have the eagle, expos, queen, but the reason we can do this with a queen charge and not a kill squad is because of the infernos, the air defenses, and you'll also notice there's not a whole lot of flanking point damage. And what I mean by that is all the point damage for the most part that the queen's going to encounter is going to be point damage she can very immediately step up and take out. If these mortars were uh, like archer towers, for example, be a little more tricky, but as she moves in this way, both cannons right in her vision, both expos right in her vision. There are these archer towers, but they're pretty far away, so not both of them won't be able to lock onto her at once, only one at most. And then these next expos will lock on eventually, but that's starting to get towards later in the charge when it's, when it's okay, really. So uh, uses the king as a funnel. I like how he started the queen a little low, taking out these two, then walking up. That's uh, better than starting her right dead uh, at 3 o'clock there. So um, that, that wizard's going to be huge. It's going to grab uh, the air defense and kind of help with the warden there. Now he had these wall breakers, but it seemed like with the jump spell, there wasn't any point really. Because the jump spell is just going to be used on top of the clan castle anyway. So I feel like the jump just could be dropped farther out and uh, would have had the same effect. But anyway, you know, whatever. Everything moves through here. Drops the Warden late with the Queen, and the Warden gets kind of weird. He walks like around that wall um, before jumping over it. So he actually gets locked onto by the Archer Tower, but it's okay. The timing would have been pretty good anyway uh, to use it on the Queen. So pops the Warden's ability right here, going to protect everything, let the Queen get healed up a little bit. A few hogs just to start helping out, get that Expo down a little quicker, and then saving that all-importance Queen's ability for the defensive queen, which is the last thing that needs to go down. Then here come the hogs. Notice the stone slammer, gonna get great value here. There's a Tesla farm out there, which doesn't stand a chance to that slammer. It would have messed up the pathing of the hogs. There's most likely a giant bomb out there. This That was a critically good use. And a lot of people would have used the wall wrecker at three o'clock with the queen. But I like how it was recognized that, hey, the stone slammer gets so much value. Let's just use wall breakers or the jump spell in this case uh, for the queen and get the value from that stone slammer on the other side, especially because it adds extra hogs once it uh, goes down eventually. And that extra troop space wouldn't have been as important for the queen because it just would have been like Valks or something, which would have made her job quicker, but not necessarily easier. All right, so everything moving through that extra heal spell was basically just for show. Probably didn't even need it. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff there to OG. And uh, we'll fast forward to the end here. So that was a, a good example of, what do you know, base identification, the theme of today's video. Switching sides here real quick to number six. Um, I, I do like, and this is actually the same person with their base being three-starred. Um, I do like showing the other side every once in a while. Um, another thing to look at just that might pop up out to you is the concentration of valuable things in this base. And what I mean by that is we have both Infernos relatively close, the Queen, um, the CC, and then the, there's like, you know, Wizard Towers, Air Sweepers. There's not a whole lot of dead space or gaps inside this base. 
um, and there's a lot of value kind of concentrated and that should scream Electron to you, especially with the town hall being conveniently opposite side. No air defenses here, allows a blimp to kind of come right on in, drop right in the middle of the base and get a lot of great value. Eagle is the one thing we'd like to see over there that's not, but that's okay because the way the Lalo is going to work, uh, the Eagle will be dealt with relatively quickly. The only thing you don't want to have mainly is the eagle like on the back end like being one of the last defenses to get taken out. Um, all I will say is either you're going to take out the eagle relatively early or towards the middle of the attack or you're not going to take out the eagle at all. There are very few successful attacks that get the eagle as like one of the last buildings. Although they have been on the channel before but the, it's much less likely. So you guys saw right there um, uses the rage, two clones, battle blimp with the electro dragon and a balloon. And look at how much was taken out because the base was nice and compact there. Um, because there were any air defenses or anything like that to take out the blimp too early. It got a nice deep push and the, elect uh, the electricity bounces or whatever you call it because the buildings were close enough together. Uh, really got some great value there. And then like I said, look at the Lalo pathing. Um, it's going into the Eagle relatively quickly. And also, it's not too wide. I mean, this is that kind of horseshoe, as sometimes people call it. It's the same thing for hogs. You want relatively narrow pathing, like a little runway. It could be curved, but something not too wide uh, in terms of the, uh, the defenses and how they're set up, which uh, allows the balloons to kind of move through in a predictable way and get these defenses taken out. Uh, Great Warden's ability there protected the Lava Hounds and the Balloons as the spells had run out. And at this point, nothing left, but doesn't matter. Doesn't need any more haste, just a few defenses left up and they will go down very quickly. We'll fast forward and then take a look at two Town Hall 10s before we wrap up this video. Okay, um, next one is number 11. Going back to our attacks, Nano John, and this base should scream Electro, or sorry, not Electro, uh, Drag Bat, I guess, as you call it, Dragons Bats. And there's a few different reasons. First, it's very compact. I mean, it is pretty much all defenses within the walls, besides what, like a barracks here, a barracks here, the CC, obviously the Queen. And I guess the DE storage, but it's very heavily defense uh, within inside the base. Everything's very compact. But most importantly, most, most importantly, look at where the wizard towers are. Look at this multi. It, okay, this guy's like, hey, I can cover these air defenses with my multi. Now they can't use the bat spell. Well, that's the exact wrong thing to think. And if you look at my um, video on how to defend the. Uh, bat spell I think is the correct video or how to defend dragons also might be helpful um, or the actual attack strategy itself I've made a ton of videos on drag bat if you look at any of those I think you guys will see pretty clearly the one thing you don't want to have as a defender and the one thing you do want to have as the attacker is a nice multi that you can freeze rage and drop all your bat spells on top of so right there freeze rage bats the multi goes down then what's right next to them? All the air defenses. So all these air defenses going down, there's no wizard towers, there's no multi-infernos. They're just going to wreak havoc on this entire base. Now because they were nerfed relatively recently, you can see they won't you know, go coast to coast here, but they get all four air defenses plus the inferno tower, and that's all that was really needed um, because the dragons were able to take out the front end of the base so quickly. Right there, the stone slammer drops out its balloons, and this thing is pretty much GG before it even began. So that is that is something that should scream to you if you see this type of thing in a base where you have all four air defenses only being guarded by a multi-inferno that's smack in the middle of them. Uh, bring out that, uh, that bat spell freeze rage combination. So we'll fast forward. You can see there's like six, seven dragons left up, which is almost all of the dragons that uh, we began with here. Um, so one more Town Hall 10, then we will wrap this thing up. And um, I guess it's maybe a little bit late to be saying this, but it might be helpful to sometimes pause the video, think about how you would attack the base and kind of see what my thoughts are and what the actual attacker ended up doing. I guess it kind of gives it away that I have some of the troops at the bottom, but um, it's still helpful to think th it through sometimes. Uh, get your own thoughts down and then maybe compare that. Um, okay, quick quiz for you Town Hall 10s. Where's the best place to start a queen walk on this base? 
Um, I guess you can make a few different arguments at different locations, but I have one spot that kind of jumps out to me for first a queen walk that kind of turns into a queen charge. And what you should look for as a Town Hall 10 is, is there a nice place I can do a queen walk where the air defenses won't start shooting my healers as the queen moves? So that means you can't walk the queen this, starting here up this way, because that one air defense will likely take out the healers as they start cutting across here. Um, and it also, there's not a whole lot of point defense that's just going to be raining in on my queen that she herself can't reach. So that would mean um, this expo up here, either way, wherever you're walking, unless you actually go inside this compartment, you can't reach the expo, but the expo can easily reach the queen. That's something we don't like. So looking at this base, I think the best queen walk was definitely from 3 o'clock going down. The reason being, gets a lot of good defensive value, archer tower, cannon, wizard tower, um, then these defenses as we start to move down. And also, okay, there is one expo that has a little bit of range that might get on her for the, the very beginning. But besides that, this archer tower can't reach anything on the outside, courtesy of it being on all ground. And then there's also a nice opportunity for a stone slammer to be used. Now there is an air defense, it won't get that far, but what it will do is it'll go to one of these defenses right around here and it'll slap open a bunch of walls. And that'll let the queen all the way into this compartment. And what can she reach from that compartment? Well, she can reach the archer queen, the inferno tower. So really this is a high defense value queen walk that also gets the queen. Uh, the defensive queen and of course the cc troops plus one inferno tower um and no spells have been used up to this point and i don't think the spells will have to be used until close to the entry uh, maybe just to rage the queen up for a few more point defense but yeah great great queen walk here right now there's nothing on her because the stone slammer is tanking and like i said it opens up those two layers of walls i think there's valks inside of it but we'll see uh uses the king for the funnel on the other side which is a great thing to do and yep, out pop some Valks. They go ahead and get some value before they go down. And all that works out very nicely. It's going to be a Hound Loon CC, but the Queen will get through it eventually. Now the question, I guess, is what do you use on the back end of this base? Uh, can you use Hogs? I mean, the Queen is going to go down, the Defensive Queen. However, the Defensive King is still alive. Might not be the best idea. Um, is a little bit wide also for Hogs. Once you get to that Mortar, the pathing's kind of weird as they go out and back in. Not the best Hog pathing. Uh, balloons, the same kind of problem. The pathing isn't great among these defenses, plus the air sweeper will likely still be up there. Plus you have the back end multi, then wizard tower expo. So I guess, you know, when you can get a good value queen walk, but it's like, oh, I'm so unlucky. Uh, the, the back end is actually relatively well set up defensive wise. Well, if you just look at the actual number of defenses in important buildings like the Queen and the Infernos you're going to get on your walk, and then you don't know what to use in the back end, Miners are a good thing to use because they tend to not really discriminate. Um, if there is a certain lack of defenses still left up on the base and you have enough Miners, generally speaking, they will do the job. And the same is not true for Hogs or Balloons. Um, a lot of power in an air or hog attack can be taken out by bad defensive pathing for the hogs or the balloons um, and stuff like that. But the miners will not lie. If there is not many defenses left up, if you got some great value for your queen walk, typically miners are a good way to kind of finish off the base if you don't know what else to use. And right here, they actually wasn't even the best funnel because the king was already used, so nothing was really up here to funnel them. So quite a few miners actually left the base to the outside. But because there uh, was not that many total defenses left up because of the great value from the queen charge, um, it didn't matter. The miners still got the job done, and uh, that was a, a good use of them on this attack. So that will do it. Thanks for watching. A bit of a long video, but I hope you found it helpful for identifying bases and what attacks to use. And um, yeah, that's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bisectatron out.